and today I want to talk about my experience of going 30 days sugar free to get closer to God and what I've learned from doing this. So the reason that I wanted to do this was because I use food as comfort, like sugary foods, like specifically desserts as comfort. So in my mind, I thought instead of going to sugary desserts as comfort, I would go to God for comfort. So by eliminating sugar, I would get closer to God, right? And so I've never been completely sugar free. In the past, I would be paleo, which is no processed foods, no dairy, no grains, no legumes. But I would still be able to eat sugar because I could have maple syrup and I could have coconut sugar. So I would make like paleo desserts, you know, so in my mind, they were healthy, you know, but they are still filled with sugar and you can use them as a way to cope and eat your feelings away, basically. Right. And so then what I started realizing is that I was also being gluttonous because I had saw somebody say like a spiritual person back when I was spiritual that even if you eat a food that your body normally can't eat, if you eat it on a celebration, on a holiday, somebody's birthday, your body isn't going to react the same way as it would if you ate it on just a regular day. And so I don't really think that's true necessarily because I found my body was reacting to these things. But so on holidays or whatever, I would just be very gluttonous. And I, for example, with ice cream cake, I am gluten-free, I'm gluten intolerant and the Carvel ice cream cake has those little um, cookie crumbles in the middle and that has gluten in it, right? But so on people's birthdays, I would eat that even though it had gluten in it and then I would have to, you know, suffer the consequences of my actions because of that, right? But it would never be, I would just eat one slice of cake. I would be eating like half the cake, four slices of cake. I would be eating so much of it, right? And so even on certain family members' birthdays, even if they didn't necessarily like ice cream cake, I would go out and buy an ice cream cake, you know, and they would have maybe some other type of cake that they liked, but I would get the ice cream cake that I wanted and I would be very gluttonous with it. And I would basically eat the whole thing, you know, in two days, right? And so even on my birthday this past year, I had celebrated with my Bible study group when I brought the cake and I bought a big cake, right? Because I didn't know how many people were going to be there. Then it ended up just being like four of us, right? And I ended up having like four pieces and I was going to end up, you know, bringing the leftovers home and I'd be able to have it at my house. But then we ended up eating the whole thing. It would, it was mostly everyone had like one slice, but then me and this one girl were being super gluttonous and we had so many slices and it was just like, I would just basically be eating these things until like I couldn't eat any more. Right. And so I'm not paleo anymore, but I'm trying to get back to just eating like healthier, right? But so the turning point for me when realizing I had a problem was how after these young adult events at the church, we would always go to Applebee's after because it's like close by and they are open till late. And so the first time I ordered vanilla ice cream for dessert, they give you just a small little scoop. The next time I ordered two scoops of ice cream and they give it in two separate things, right? Then the next time I ordered it, I asked them for like two scoops of ice cream, but like, can you just put it in the same thing, you know? But then they still brought it out in two bowls of ice cream, right? And so then I'm just feeling like I look super gluttonous right now. I'm the only person that ordered dessert, first of all, out of like this table of like eight. And they're giving it to me in two bowls. Like, this is ridiculous. I felt like I was being gluttonous. So then I decided that it's time to go sugar free. And also guys at my waitressing job, every night basically I would get ice cream at the end. I would eat, they had ice cream there. So I would get ice cream there and I would always, I would have like three scoops with like a bunch of whipped cream and I would put the caramel syrup on it and all this stuff, right? And part of it is you wanna treat your body like a temple, right? Because I also have chocolate sensitivity where chocolate gives me headaches. You know, if you are eating something that the doctor told you shouldn't have, for example, they told me wheat sensitivity and chocolate sensitivity. If I'm eating these things, obviously it's doing something in my body that's not right. And so me eating it is basically, I'm not treating my body like a temple because then I'm going to have to suffer the consequences. So specifically I would get headaches from chocolate and then I would just like take Advil to cope with this. But the ice cream I was eating at my work would be the mint chocolate chip ice cream, right? So then after this turning point of the Applebee's situation, I decided I'm gonna go sugar-free. So then 
mostly because of, like I said before, I want my comfort to come from God and I don't want to go to food for comfort. And so I'm not super upset like every single day, right? But, you know, as a woman, you would know like moments like kind of like, you know, PMS, the week before your period, you start to get kind of upset about things and you can be, you know, more emotional about certain things. And this would be the main time that I would want to start turning to food for comfort, you know, and then maybe even during my period as well, this would be a time when I would want to be turning to my, to food for comfort. Right. And so I had to put my dog down three months ago. And so when I had started going sugar free, it was like two months into that. Right. And so during that time when I was during like that PMS period, the week before my period and during my period, that was a time when I had wanted to eat more like sugary things. And I wanted to, you know, get some candy and stuff like that and bake something for myself to eat. But I just had to stay strong and I had to pray for the strength not to do that right. And so I guess I would say during that time, I felt closer to God because I would pray for God to comfort me. You know, in the Bible, it says, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. So I would pray for God to comfort me in my time of mourning. And I felt like God did comfort me, right? But when it was other times throughout the week, like I said, I'm, I'm not somebody that's like, I'm not super upset every single day, you know? So just like regular days, I didn't necessarily feel closer to God just because I wasn't eating sugar, right? And so I was, I made it to five weeks sugar-free and on Halloween, I didn't eat any sugar. And this was because I was praying for the strength not to eat sugar, right? And so the candy that my brother got to give out to the sugar traders was like all candy that I couldn't have, like Kit Kats, they're not gluten-free. And then he got Almond Joys, which I don't like, and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I do like Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I don't like to eat them like plain. I like to eat them with mixed in with ice cream, specifically the mint chocolate chip ice cream. And like I said, those things both have chocolate in them, right? So I was tempted to go to the store, get mint chocolate chip ice cream so that I could mix the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups in them, right? But so I decided that I wasn't going to be doing that. And so I didn't do that, right? But so... What I realized was that this started out, you know, on a good note, you know, trying to go to God for comfort instead of food for comfort. But then what I realized is like, I was just kind of glorifying myself in a way because I started to think like that I'm better than other people because they eat sugar and all this stuff and I don't eat sugar and I'm sugar free and I've made it to 30 days sugar free. Like I'm so much better than other people, right? And I was just kind of using it to like boast about myself, I guess, in a way. But so yesterday I went to a woman's event at a church and so they had like pie there. They had a bunch of different pies and they had a pumpkin pie, which is my favorite pie. And they also had a sweet potato pie. And so the slices were really small because I guess you want to have enough to share with everybody, right? And so at first I was like, I don't know, should I not have it? Should I stick to my like sugar-free diet, right? But then I kind of felt like God was telling me that it's okay to enjoy myself. So then I got one slice, one slice of the pumpkin pie and one slice of the sweet potato pie. And I just ate like the filling in it. I didn't eat the crust of it. But so it wasn't that good. I feel like because of the fact that I've been then five weeks sugar free, you know, my taste buds are changing. So regular food tastes better. So that's one benefit of being sugar free is that like, regular food, fruits and vegetables will start to taste better too because your taste buds start to change. And so the food ended up being like really sugary and I didn't really like it that much. The sweet potato pie, I didn't like really. It was more sugary than the pumpkin pie. I did still, I kind of did like the pumpkin pie a little bit, but it was a little bit too sugary I felt like. But so basically what I've realized from doing this is that not eating food doesn't bring you closer to God necessarily. And I realized that there are other things that bring you closer to God. And I kind of had this verse in the back of my mind, which I'll read to you um, while going through this, which is 1 Corinthians 8 verse 8. It's true that we can't win God's approval by what we eat. We don't lose anything if we don't eat it and we don't gain anything if we do. So obviously, 
this is kind of like depends on your specific situation because obviously it's not good to be gluttonous but what i realized is that there is can be a middle ground so instead of for me being so all or nothing with it where i was like i'm never gonna eat sugar i think it is okay if i eat on a special occasion or a special holiday however i do need to be mindful and i can't be super gluttonous with it by eating like 10 slices you know being super gluttonous like i was in the past it's okay to have one slice of cake i had two slices of pie you know but they were they were small slices okay the two of them together added into one slice all right and i basically didn't i only ate half of the sweet potato pie one because i didn't like it that much but so what i realized for me is that you know what actually brings me closer to God is praying to God and spending time in nature, but actually spending time in nature and like admiring God's goodness, you know, not just going into nature, but like drawing, not just going into nature and, you know, crocheting, not being in nature and reading, but like being in nature, you know, for 10, you know, 10 minutes of like looking at the trees, looking at the sky, looking at the ponds and looking at the ducks, like actually submerging yourself into nature and watching the things in nature that is what makes me feel better so today I went to the park and I forced myself to do this for 10 minutes so at first I was doing it and I was like let me check the time and it, only five minutes had went by I thought it was 10 minutes so like instead of meditating like you know closing your eyes and like meditating what I decided I want to do is just go into nature and look at nature like i was just saying for 10 minutes so i was watching the ducks and stuff so first i checked it was five minutes so then i had did it for more time then it was three more minutes and then i did it and again for another three more minutes so i guess i could set a timer but i just don't want to set the timer because then i don't want it to like hearing the timer go off kind of like startle me and my nervous system but anyways then the 10 minutes went by then i was like okay now it's time to read my bible then people were lawn mowing and I have sensory issues so I got scared and I came home. But I'm happy that I did that first. The first thing I did was spending time in nature by looking at nature because if I would have just did started with the other things then I would have ended up having to leave because of the lawn mowers and then I wouldn't even have had done that. So I also have these bible cards that I like to pick a card every day um i don't do this at all. every day because sometimes i'll just read from where i left off in the bible but like if i don't know what to read in the bible i'll use that as like god guiding me of where to go and so this one i got today jeremiah 29 11 which is for i know the plans i have for you says the lord they are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope but i think what god wanted to show me was the verse that is under it it's um, verse 12. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. And so that's basically what I realized is that you get closer to God by actually, you know, praying, looking for him, spending time in nature, you know, trying to hear God's voice, you know. In the beginning, because... Um, I was just trying to get closer to God. I'm like, what's the easiest way for me to get closer to God? And to me, that's kind of like just taking out a certain food to eat, right? Oh, I'm just not going to eat sugar. And then I'm just going to get closer to God. And it's just going to be like that. And I'm going to get closer to him, right? Like I said, there obviously were times when I did feel closer to him. But only in those times of like when I wanted to eat my feelings away. Because I don't need to eat my feelings away every day you know if you're someone that needs to eat your feelings away you feel like every single day then you probably would feel even closer to him than I did but so that's kind of like I guess an easy way I thought the easy way for me to get closer to God would be to get rid of sugar but that's actually not the most fulfilling way and that's not the most you know beneficial way and that's not the way that's actually going to work so what I realized is getting closer to God means praying every day so i've been waking up in the morning and praying every day i've been getting on my knees and praying and so i've only been able to make it to 10 minutes because i like i look at the time before and then i look at the time after and it's always like 10 minutes so i guess i don't do it for that long but like i'm not even sure like because i was watching this other lady on youtube and she said that she like she would force herself to pray for one hour and now she's able to get to an hour, like, and it's easy for her. 
But then I remember when Jesus saying, like, don't just pray, like, um, going, babbling on and on, like the Gentiles do. Here it is. But when you, um, when you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your father knows exactly what you need, even before you ask him. And then it says, pray like this, and it does like, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. So I'm still trying to figure out like, a good prayer method. I pray a lot throughout the day. I pray for strength. I prayed before making this video, you know, for the strength to make this video, wash with myself doubt, my anxiety, you know. And so I'm still trying to figure out like the best prayer routine for me. But what I realized is that praying is very important and it's going to help you more than just food. Obviously, like I said, it depends on your situation and, you know, you might be even more gluttonous than I was, you know? But so what I realized, what I want to do now is I want to, I, cause I don't just want to go back to my old ways. So what I want to do now is be, I guess like 95% sugar free when it's just regular days, I'm not going to eat sugar because I'm in this, um, I'm a high school leader for the high schoolers at the church that I go to. And so they always have candy there. And I haven't been eating it, right? And so I don't want to just be eating candy every Sunday just because we're meeting up and doing this high school group. You know, that's not really a celebration or anything like that. So what I want to do is just do what I did in the past, where it's like only kind of having it as a celebration, but not being gluttonous with it and being like I was yesterday when I only had like the two slices. So... Because I was even thinking, because Thanksgiving is coming up soon, and I was thinking like, what's going to happen on Thanksgiving? Like... Should I not eat these things? Like, cause my aunt would, she makes these like candy yams, like the, the sweet potatoes and then the marshmallows on top. And that's like one of my favorite things to have at Thanksgiving. And I really like cheesecake and stuff. And I was like, pumpkin pie is my favorite pie. I was thinking that I was going to make myself a sugar-free dessert, which I, I could also do that. Um, because those foods might, I might not even like them as much. Like I said, since my taste buds have changed. So what I decided I want to do is like on regular days, I want to be sugar-free and on days when I find myself being upset about things, like I said, like with, with PMS and like being on your my period, like in those times I want to stay sugar free and I want to go to God for my comfort and ask him to comfort me for whatever it is that I'm upset about. Because I don't want to go to, I don't want to eat my feelings. I want to, for comfort, I want to go to God for comfort. But like on a special holiday, on a celebration, on my birthday, you know, other people's birthdays, whatever. I think it's, I think it's okay for me to enjoy myself during those times but not to be gluttonous with it so just eat like one or two slices and you know that's what I'm gonna do and especially and I'm gonna pray for the strength not to eat the foods that I can't have like I said the chocolate and the gluten so that's where I'm at right now I realized I need to do is I need to get up before sunrise because when I do that that I feel happier so just getting up before sunrise praying you know and, and just praying and reading my Bible and doing artwork and being in nature. Those are the things that are going to help me. And those are the things that are going to bring me closer to God. So that's what I realized. Let me know if you guys were also planning on being sugar-free. You know, still do it because you can reset your taste buds. But I think you might only need to do it for like two weeks to reset your taste buds. But you guys should try it out kind of as a challenge. But yeah, that's what I realized about this. Let me know your thoughts, and any other videos you want to hear me making. Thanks. Bye.